This is Alex, Paul and Jess, a team of hustlers who have one aim, to make you, the public, part with your hard-earned cash. In this series, the hustlers will attempt to pull off some of their toughest scams yet, and to do so, they'll appear as you've never seen them before. This is The Real Hustle Undercover. After hundreds of scams, the hustlers face the real problem of recognition, so they've had to come up with new ways of keeping their identity secret, enabling them to keep pulling off daring cons. The hustlers have assembled numerous disguises and created various characters, all designed to get the job of cheating you out of your money done. On tonight's show, one lady gets the shock of her life. Has the hustler been hustled? Excuse me, did you take my money out my pocket? And Caprice gets stage fright. I froze, I don't know, I don't know what to say. All the people on this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so that you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. After a hard morning shopping for baby clothes, heavily pregnant Jess needs to take a load off her feet. She decides to have a well-earned rest in this quiet cafe and gets set for some quiet time with her favorite magazine. This is The Decoy. Her battery's recharged, it's time for Jess to get on her way. But first, she needs to settle the bill. Oops. Oh, excuse me, can you help me please? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm a little bit immobile today. In her condition, Jess can't possibly pick up the coins. But luckily, some sympathetic fellow customers are only too happy to come to her rescue. I promise I'll do it again. <laughs> Eventually, Jess gets her stuff together and leaves. A little later, those helpful customers make an unwelcome discovery. Seems a handbag they put safely under the table has disappeared. They can't understand how it's happened, and the cafe owner is unable to help. Then, just as it's dawning on them what they've lost. Oh, you here lost the bag? That's my bag. What a stroke of luck. A guy coming out of here, running down the street. But if that kind-hearted workman looks and sounds familiar. It's because it's Alex. Is that yours? Thank you. Yeah? Thank you so much. I know I had that bag, I had that bag right on my foot. Really? I don't believe that. I mean, he just, he rummaged through it, ran away. Everything's there. Well, lucky you then. I've got carry a lot of things in me, you know? I'll be enjoying the rest of your day. Thank you. All right, take care. Thank you. So how did Alex get his hands on their missing handbag? To find out, we need to go back and take another look at Jess's moment of clumsiness. When Jess dropped her change all over the floor, you may have spotted another customer sitting nearby. Paul. Jess had deliberately positioned herself so that when the marks turned to help her, 
they would turn their backs on Paul. I didn't do my a few seconds were all he needed to grab the handbag and stuff it in his own bag. Thank you so much. Oh my god, Thank you. Before helping to return some coins. Pushing past Jess's helpers and making his exit. The commotion caused by Jess had provided the perfect cover for Paul to commit daylight robbery. Alex was parked up around the corner. And after giving the marks 10 minutes to discover the theft, it was time for him to play the knight in shining armor. When you hear lost the bag. Having thought the bag was gone forever, the marks are mightily relieved to see it again. The thing, the phone's is not there. The phone, two phones. Her cards, cash, and house keys are safe and sound. But it's not all good news, as she discovers both her mobile phones are missing. So have the hustlers really concocted this elaborate scam just to steal a couple of mobile phones? Of course not. The theft of the handbag was just act one in a much bigger drama. As the marks are soon to find out. The life of a hustler is considered glamorous by some, so who better to put them right than a celebrity? Each week, Alex, Jess and Paul take a well-known personality and put them in the shoes of a hustler. Oh, they give you the inside track <laughs> and learn the harsh realities of just how it feels to con the public. It's strange to see them walk away like that. I felt so awful afterwards. <laughs> oh, I hate myself now. This is The Celebrity Hustle. This week's celebrity is actress and model Caprice. I mean, I don't know what to anticipate. I have no idea and I'm going to do something that I've never even thought of, you know, vaguely doing before. I think it's horrible, I actually, to con somebody and to steal from them. So, I don't know, we'll see. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's time for Caprice to meet the hustlers and find out what they've got planned. We're going to see how um, easy it is to pass counterfeit notes around because you're going to be passing them. OK. It's the currency switch. Her challenge is to go to a shop with a real £50 note, buy something and receive two 20s in change. Then she'll have to switch the two genuine £20 notes for the fakes without being seen. I'm going to show you. They're going to hold the notes between your uh, middle finger and your index finger, just like this. That goes underneath here. You take them, and without even looking at it, you put them underneath here, and you say, actually, can I have tens for these? Once she's done the switch, she'll then have to pass off the counterfeit notes to the shopkeeper. Jess is going to come with you. Let's do it. OK. Come on. <laughs> Jess will create a diversion when Caprice does the switch. Plus, she'll be there as backup should anything go wrong. OK, cool. Do you want to walk in now? Oh, OK, doll. See you. The girls stagger their arrival so they don't look like they're together. Caprice needs to make sure she doesn't spend over £10 to guarantee she gets two 20s as change. If the shopkeeper gives her anything different, then Caprice has to say she prefer 20s instead. $7.50. This is it. The shopkeeper pulls out two 20s. Jess is ready to do a distraction. Now can Caprice do the switch? She's done it. Now she needs to ask for the change and attempt to hand over the counterfeit notes. Thank you. <laughs> you know, can I just, do you have anything smaller? Can I get, do you have like fives and tens? I didn't give you that one. That's the one I gave you. Well, you that's the dodgy notes. She's been rumbled. The notes are sticking out from beneath the notebook. Caprice needs to get herself out of a sticky situation. I can see my notes is over there. Where are your notes? There is, look. 
That's that's the one I gave you. And you're the hand. <laughs> Caprice is speechless, so Jess steps in. You check your tills regularly? Yeah, and I check the notes every single note comes in. Well, then how can you just give me those then? Well, this is not my notes, I don't care. So I'm not going to give you a change. For the first time in real hustle history, a scam is about to end in disaster. Caprice is in danger of getting herself arrested. Acting quickly, Jess leaves to get Alex and Paul. Is she leaving? <clears throat> I don't know. Huh? This might be with you, I don't know. Quickly devising an off-the-cuff rescue plan, the boys make their entrance. Greenwich, please. Young lady, try and buy anything in yeah. here a few minutes ago. That's the one just there. A quick flash of their wallets is enough to convince the shopkeeper that they're the police. To me. The shopkeeper points out Caprice, so Paul pretends to deal with her. The hustlers have taken control of the situation. This lady try and pass counterfeit money. Is this your money? That's right. That's yeah. your money? Yeah. This is real. So that's the 50 pounds he gave me. Yeah, that's counterfeit too. Paul then throws a spanner in the works. Apparently, the 50 that Caprice used is counterfeit as well. But nothing's got past this lady yet. I've got the pen there if you want me to scrap that. No, yeah, that's check on those pens not really. I've got one more 50. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the 50 outside with the, uh, with the proper scope. I've got the pen this. here. Those are not as reliable as the ones that we have in our car, in our patrol car. To Caprice's relief, she's out of the shop for good, and the boys have got her £50 back, as well as the genuine £40 she received in change. It's not how they planned it, but they've got exactly what they wanted. Reassuring the shopkeeper that he'll come back with her money, Alex exits the shop never to return. Not only have they saved Caprice's bacon, but they've turned a disastrous scam into a success. I froze. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know how con artists keep it together. I was. I was so scared. I thought, oh my goodness, what did I just tell her here? These are yours. Here, take it, and then run out. I just wanted to run out. And then the guys came in. Thank God, the guys came in. Two men was came in and say, oh, we're just looking for the girls passing the dodgy knots. He took the fifty pound. He said, oh, I'm going outside and checking the knots again. Then when I look outside, nobody's there. To be so calm and to think on your feet like that is unbelievable. Oh, I feel sick. Still to come. Is there a problem? Gentlemen? PC Alex finds some trouble on his beat. We'll sort this out. And today becomes this woman's worst nightmare. I think someone's going to pinch me in a moment and I'm going to wake up. This shifty character is looking a bit worse for wear. He could clearly do with some warmth and a hot drink. Luckily for him, he's found a perfect spot and enough money for a brew. Have a cup of tea, please. But this is not just some scruffy fella looking for shelter. He might seem skint now, but soon it'll be champagne and not tea he'll be ordering. This is the coffee fix. Although Paul has his nose in a newspaper, he's keeping an eye on the cafe's customers. And as two of them get up to pay, Paul starts to pay close attention. As they exit, Paul decides to do the same. The scam is on. Excuse me, did you take my money out of my pocket? You were sitting behind me in there, yeah? I had stuff written on it. Have you got my money? The Marks have found themselves in a difficult situation. Confronted by such an aggressive character, they could do with some assistance. Luckily, a friendly copper is on hand. I had money in this pocket, and you were sitting right behind me. You know you were. Is there a problem, gentlemen? These guys took my money. I had money in my pocket. I was sitting right there. I don't have any money on me now. I wrote right, something right, on right. my five pound note. Nice to step over to the side. Just, uh, we'll sort this you. out. Don't worry, I'm sure this can misunderstand. To the Mark's relief, Alex quickly takes control of the situation. That's right, we'll sort this out. The, what are you talking about, sir? How are you going to separate your money from theirs? What, what was it, £5, okay. pounds, £10, pounds, uh, £20? Pounds, I, I had it? written something on one of them. I, I brought a phone number. Okay. And I, had, I, had a, I had some... I had asked to have a tens, look at your wallet, sir, sorry. I had 20... Alex asks for the Mark's wallets to see if they contain Paul's note that he claims to have written on. 
Right. Okay, I don't see any money in here. Do you have any other I money in your, on I your... More than that. Can I have a look at your cash? Alex is now in possession of a wallet full of credit cards and a hundred pounds in cash. See? That's the money that I had. Right. That Let's was the money that I had. Look, look, that's that's my phone hey, number. Hey, so, that's so, my phone hey, number hey, written hey. on there. Alright, look, we're just gonna sort this out. Can I ask you to stay, stand over here? But and sir. And even though the banknote in question has appeared, Alex takes the other wallet just in case. Oh, Gentlemen, can I ask you to come with me? Well, can I hold the money? Sir, just stand over here until I come deal with you. You're the same. The evidence seems to suggest that Paul is right, but with a few well-chosen words, Alex puts the marks at ease. I think this gentleman is quite well known around this area. Just step back inside, I'll come and get you, yeah? I just don't want him to be aggravated by... The marks happily sit themselves down in the cafe, pleased to be away from the uncomfortable situation. They now wait for friendly copper Alex to deal with the agitated man and return with their wallets. Oh, what are you saying? I'm saying that I really think this thing on my head itches. And okay. But they'll have a long wait. Because the policemen, the scruffy man and their wallets have disappeared around the corner and are gone for good. Oh. After spending 10 minutes trying to get their heads round what's just happened, the marks start wondering where the policeman and the dodgy gentleman have got to. But just like their wallets, they're nowhere to be seen. So how did that banknote that Paul had written on end up in the marks' pocket? When Paul paid for his cup of tea, he handed that note to the waitress, who placed it in the till. Then, when the marks got up to pay, they received that note in change. Having identified his marks, Paul texted Alex, who was waiting just around the corner. And everything's in place to pull off the coffee fix. <laughs> I had uh, credit cards and stuff in my wallet and about £100 in cash. Uh, I just had a lot of my driving licence, bank cards and stuff. So. When I pulled my cash out, there was actually a phone number on that note. But now they're both gone. The victim in this case is hustled because they're too differential to authority. Along comes a policeman and says, you're accused of theft and you're immediately on the back foot. You just want out of this. A real police officer will want you to stay with your property. A scam artist will want to run away. We all enjoy a night on the town. And a good night becomes a great one when it doesn't cost a penny. Here's the challenge. The hustlers are going to show you how to win drinks off your mates by using proposition bets. Yeah. I'll buy it yeah. All right. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hustlers always have the edge, so you don't stand a chance. <laughs> so watch and learn. Jess is out in a Brighton bar to see if she can win some free drinks. Really? Yeah. Can you juggle or anything like that? I can juggle. Can you do anything with a bottle? Well, can you, you, juggle you a drink bottle? from a bottle? Well, how about I show you a trick with a bottle that can get you a free drink? Yeah. OK? Take this bottle. Yeah. I've got the cap here, and I've bent it in half. Okay. I want you to place the cap in the bottle. Then I want you to position the bottle wherever you want and however you want. And then, don't touch it. I want you to get the cap out of the bottle. Without touching it. Without touching it. And if you can do that, then I'll buy you whatever drink you want. And if I can do it, you buy me a drink. He has to place the cap inside the bottle. And then, after positioning it anywhere on the table, he has to get the cap out, but without touching the bottle. So I want to put that in the bottle. Yeah. You now need to place the bottle wherever you want on the table. Yeah. And now you have to get the cap out of the bottle without touching it. What are you thinking? Because you look confused. What are you actually thinking? I haven't got a clue what to do. You haven't got a clue what to do? I would have played like... I'll do it if you don't move. <laughs> this is for him. <laughs> I, want, I want someone to give me a clue. You're not getting a clue? No. OK. I just don't know what to do. Right, OK, I'm going to show you how it's done. OK, can I just... I'm going to move you here. OK. Just so I can use this part, OK? So, I'm going to place the cap into the bottle. Now, you saw me drop it, but I didn't say you had to drop it in. All I said was you had to place it in, OK? So, placing it in, I'm going to rest it on the edge, just like that. OK, now I'm not touching it. OK? And then... Pull it out. <laughs> I'm clapping myself on that one. 
So, rather than dropping the cap to the bottom of the bottle, Jess placed it carefully just inside the neck. With the bottle on its side, she then blew into it. This created enough air pressure inside the bottle to force the cap out. There you go, you can do that on your mates now. I'll have a glass of wine, please. Earlier, we saw a heavily pregnant Jess stop for a well-earned rest in this cafe. She then distracted these two sympathetic marks while Paul stole her handbag. You already here lost her bag? Which was then miraculously returned to them by Alex, a helpful workman. We just saw a guy coming out of here, running down the street. The phone's is not there. The mark discovered that although her cards, cash and house keys were safe, both her mobile phones had been taken. But if they thought that was bad then, as we're about to see, nothing could prepare them for what was to come. The giant plasma TV that was hanging on their living room wall is gone. Mom, sit down, sit down, sit down. The mark is so upset that she can't bear to look. But when she does... Oh my God! What? The stereo equipment's gone! No! Calm down, calm down. Calm her stereo has been swiped too. It's a shocking realisation. Oh, First, her handbag was pinched and two mobile phones were stolen. And now they find that their house has been burgled. Although that may seem like an uncanny coincidence, it's not. Everything was down to the hustlers. But what happened in the short time between the Mark's bag being stolen and Alex handing it back? And how did that lead to the break-in? The first thing Alex looked for after Paul had stolen the bag were the Mark's house keys, which Paul immediately took to a local key cutters to get copied. Meanwhile, Alex removed the phones and then found some paperwork containing the Mark's home address and phone number, which he noted down. When Paul returned with the keys a few minutes later, Alex put the original set back in the bag and hot-footed it to the cafe to return the bag to its rightful owner. You here lost the bag? That was stage one of the scam successfully completed, but they still had to be sure that the house was empty when they broke in. Time for stage two. Paul and Alex were parked across the road from the Mark's house. Knowing they'd already gone back home after the initial bag theft, Paul put in a call to their home number. Hello? Hi, my name's PC Robert Marks. Uh, I'm at Greenwich Police Station and we've detained someone who has two mobile phones. Have you lost...? Yes, that's right. You have. Claiming yeah. to be a local policeman who'd recovered the missing phones, Paul asked the Marks to meet him back at the cafe so he could take a statement and return their property. It's possible, really. OK, well, I'll try and get there as quickly as I can. I may be there as quickly as that, but if not, would you wait for me? Yes, that's fine, yes, that's fine. Great, OK. See you soon. OK, thank you very much, thank you. Bye. Do we have to go to the cafe? Now. Eager to have their phones back, the Marks left the house within minutes. And as soon as they did, Alex and Paul got into position. However, to make sure they weren't caught in the act, the hustlers needed to keep a close eye on the Mark's whereabouts. That was Jess's job. But having spoken to the Mark's earlier, she needed to swap one disguise for another before they saw her again. A quick change in a local shop, and the mum-to-be was transformed into a businesswoman. She took up position with her back to the cafe so she could watch for the marks arriving in the mirror. Hello. 
And once they were there, it was Q, Paul and Alex. Uh, they've just come in now, so I think you should go in. There was no time to lose. Paul's newly cut keys worked like a dream. And once inside, the boys headed straight upstairs to the bedroom and helped themselves to a flat screen TV. Meanwhile in the cafe, Jess looked on as the Marks settled in to wait for their policeman to arrive. Next for the boys, it was a 52 inch plasma TV from the lounge. That took some shifting. The Marks were starting to wonder where their policemen and their phones had got to. Meanwhile, their top of the range stereo system was on its way out the front door. When the Marks decided they couldn't wait any longer, the boys were the first to know. They've just left. Yeah, they're on their way back now. Okay, yeah, get out there as quick as you can, okay? We asked the Mark to tell us the value of the items that had been stolen. To me, it's, it's just it's priceless. It's things, you know, you save and save because you want something nice for you and the kids. That's what we did. The TV alone was nearly two grand. It's a top of the range, a brand new one. All the stereo equipment, you know, that's, oh God, I don't even know the amount of that. It's thousands. I don't even think that when the kids come back home from school, I can let them see that. I just have to leave the door closed because they're going to be so upset. <laughs> and how did she react when she found out what had really happened? Even though you told me, it's, I'm still kind of shocked, you know, even though you're like, OK, everything's all right. I'm still, I'm really shocked. I'm really, really shocked about it. I am. It's shaken me up, I'm telling you. It really has. This is a multi-layered con that plays on several aspects of human nature. First of all, there's a distraction, which plays on the fact that most people would want to help a pregnant girl if she dropped the change on the floor. And when we call them and tell them that we can resolve the situation, they basically do exactly what we ask them to do in order to get the property back. Whatever the circumstances are, you should never leave your bags unattended. And if you ever do receive a phone call from somebody claiming to be from the police, then hang up and call back and make sure they verify it. So remember, hustlers are everywhere. Me, can you help me, please? And people aren't always who or what you think. Do you have like fives and tens? Appearances can be deceiving. This lady try and pass counterfeit money. So think twice and keep your wits and cash about you. That was the money that I had, look. The next new ep of The Real Hustle Undercover is next Thursday at 10.30 with a double bill. Yep, two for the price of one. Next on BBC Three, we're starting off at 100 for a countdown on EastEnders' Greatest Cliffhangers.